talk about something really interesting, and it's going to be um, more of my blood magic discussions. And this particular one, we're going to address the praying hands. The praying hands you're going to find are much more interesting than most people might realize. And even if you try to Google the origin of the praying hands, you'll find, for the most part, people claim it's a mystery. Now, there's a couple of different kinds of praying hand styles that the Christians use or that are commonly used in prayer. Obviously, the first one with the palms of the hands together over the heart, often used to depict Christ in Christian prayer. And then, most likely, the more common praying hands gesture in Christianity would be the... Um, the interlocking fingers. Now, before we get into explaining where this comes from, we have to understand the concept of prayer. And we have to go back to Abraham and take a really good look of what prayer actually was and how we view prayer today compared to what was taking place in the days of Abraham when the practitioners of this kinds of magic, if you will, they knew a great deal more about the sciences. And so, when you really realize that today, for the most part, Christians don't take part in the blood ritual sacrifices of the lambs because they have Jesus Christ. So, if you were to compare modern Christian prayer with, say, ancient Abraham Christian prayer, there's a completely different um, practical use for the prayer that's taking place by Abraham. As we've discussed before, Abraham has built an altar and he has uh, sacrificed the lamb, setting it on fire. And in this particular fashion, the prayer is more like a meditation. Uh, it's a meditation ceremony that goes with this sacrifice. And as we all know, Abraham got visions. He got visions of the future, he got visions from God. Just like all the other meditation artists, he was able to get visions. And um, while there may be no speaking in the Bible, particularly of these hand gestures, we're going to talk about um, these hand gestures and how they relate to elite meditation practices. And before we go into that, it's really important to understand that these meditation sciences go hand in hand with the blood magics, uh, meditation, the elite meditation is a part of the ritual, as I have discussed before. Rather, you're burning incense or you're burning flesh. You're still burning biologicals. And this is a big part of the ritual. And in most of them, breathing in that burning vapor is a part of the ritual. But in almost all of them, meditation is absolutely part of the ritual. Visions of the future, dreams, and experiences with transdimensional entities is a part of this ritual. And, most importantly, as we discussed previously, symbols. Symbols are a part of the ritual, too. And as I uh, have discussed when these black magic occultists uh, shark dive with demons, they put a symbol around them to protect their spirit from, I suppose, occupation or mastery by these demons. Uh, so, obviously, I've discussed how that could enter you into soul contracts or used to be a trap as well, but... The thing that interested me is finding the other arts that also use the burning in the flesh, say incense and other practices like meditation, but they don't seem to have the symbols. This is really interesting when you look at uh, the Buddhist chanting, the Nam Myo Ho Renge Kyo. While they don't seem to have any symbols, they actually use a brass like bell to make a sound. Now, if you understand semantics, then you understand that even though you cannot see that sound, if you could, that sound forms in the shape of a symbol. A very complex symbol, comparable to a snowflake. So, actually, even though you cannot see the symbolism being used in the Buddhist chanting meditation, there is symbols wrapped around the body of the chanter. So this is very, very interesting, and it just goes to show you how closely you have to pay attention to discover something that might appear to be missing at face value. And so we're going to talk about another thing. Um, when we're looking at Christians praying hands, let's look at the first uh, praying hands, the palms together. And as we move into 
uh, wondering where that came from, we have um, the Buddhist and Hindu monks. And in Hindu, uh, they, they put the palms of their hands together over their heart. And they tell you their reasons for this. Um, but it seems to be philosophy. And when you read about the, uh, the Buddhists, and they're explaining it to you, they're explaining it to you about a lotus flower. Now, the interesting thing about this, when we move on, I'll explain to you why they're explaining it to you in this way. But when they explain it to you in that way, I think they're being secretive because they're talking to you with cryptology. They're basically talking to you with a riddle and they're not answering any questions at all. And we'll get into that. So, by saying or talking about the lotus flower and the, the course of its destiny to explain why they're using their hands in this way, you're going to see that is basically giving an answer in riddles that no one's going to understand. But first we're going to go into the Jewish hand gestures. You might recognize this from Star Trek. In fact, there's a lot of Star Trek concepts that came from this Jewish it's not just the way Spock looks, his haircut, that's a Jewish monk, and his hand gesture, and the badge that all the Enterprise wear on their chest is actually the hand symbol. And of course, here you got another religion that when they practice meditation or prayer, they may not be using apparent symbols around their body, but it seems these hand gestures might be symbols, and they may have symbolic values. When you're talking about some of the ancient sciences that came to this planet fully intact out of nowhere. One of the ones you have to really pay attention to is acupressure and acupuncture. The degree of science behind this medical practice baffles the minds of researchers because there's really no explanation for how a primitive culture would develop such an elite science. So, the most amazing thing is the meridian science and charting is comparable to the Aztec and Mayan calendars as they're so precise and they're so exact and so complete, nobody can explain how they just ended up here in the pyramid cities. That being said, when you're talking about hand symbols, you're talking about a symbiotic alchemy between the body and the spirit, or the physical and the spiritual. And so, when you're talking about blood circulations and movements within your body holding your hands on certain pressure points and your fingers in certain Fibonacci ratio correct symbols in your hands this can put blood pressure in certain areas and move energies in other areas and it can have a direct alchemy with the spiritual as you're meditating and so, the art that I want to talk to you about is called the Kujikuri. These are going to be an extreme meditation art that uses the multiple hand symbols in what you might call prayer or meditation. And these symbols are really amazing because not only do they have an alchemy between the acupressure systems and the energy flows within your body, but there's your symbols that we're looking for in the meditation that have been passed down to these different sciences with this blood magic. This use of symbols to somehow become practical between the spiritual and the real. I would say symbols probably best symbolize the symbiotic relationship between the physical and the real. Or the spiritual and the real. Because it seems you always need symbols when you're connecting these two and you're becoming conscious of these two. So the art of Kujikuri is a meditation art in which you become aware of internal processes and once you become aware of them you begin to learn how to control things the average person doesn't even notice. The average person might notice the tingles in their foot when their foot falls asleep and the blood flow is cut off or the tingles in their head when they stand up and get a head rush. But beyond that, to feel the tingly blood sensation and the directions in which it's flowing through the circulatory system of your body requires great many 
months, maybe years of meditation. And once you have become aware of those processes, you can actually use muscles and different little things in your body to redirect energies and flows in your body. And this can come, become extremely practical in the life of a warrior. Say you need to restrict blood flow to an area where you're wounded. Legend has it they've been able to do this. So if you want to learn more about Kuji Curry, there's a short book on the first nine symbols of the Kuji Curry. There are 84 symbols. And I wouldn't advise practicing this, but you'll learn a lot about the importance of the positioning of the hands in prayer. Now, I want to talk about the way they chart. They use charting of concepts to help people learn how to use these arts in a right way. For example, sometimes emotions will be charted using the elements because how one element has an alchemy with another element, it can perfectly symbolize how one emotion has an alchemy with another. Uh, water can be used to stamp out fire and uh, anger can be used to stamp out fear. So you can chart emotions using elements, and you'll find the Eastern philosophies charted almost every science with these philosophies. So the first one I want to talk about is the yin and yang symbol. You have to have the special breathing techniques to do this channeling. You're going to have a neutral line between the two, which is your normal breathing pattern. And then you're going to have positive breathing and negative breathing. And they go down to half your normal breathing rate and a quarter. And... and up to twice your normal breathing rate and a quarter, three quarters. This is very dangerous. Now, how they chart the uh, the hands so that you can kind of learn how and why they go in certain areas is they chart them using the elements, the fingers, you know, the thumb is void and what have you. So you can see, and again, you can learn more about this. Um, what's most interesting about charting the science of this meditation art using these elements and these symbolic references is it really goes to show you what I'm talking about when you see the way that the Buddhist monks have explained to people why they hold their hands and the palms together over their heart. They give you the chart. It's like they might as well point at this chart and say, well, the thumb is void, you know, wind, fire, water, earth. That's why. That doesn't actually tell you why, though, does it? I mean, if I was to answer why, I would say because the acupressure system, the body meridians that have energy flows, some energy is actually moving blood circulating through a certain area, and you have pulse in certain fingers and others, so you can direct that energy. Other energy would just be the heat from that blood flow and being directed by the way you hold your hands. That would actually be explaining to somebody the purpose of holding your hands this way. But if somebody were to ask me and I were to say, oh, it's because the lotus flower is doing this process, nah, that's your charting and your symbolizing to help you remember why and how you hold your hands like this. But you're not telling anybody that doesn't speak symbolism anything. So what's most interesting is to identify the most commonly used Christian uh, hand prayer symbol. And when we identify it in the Kuja Curry art, that would be the symbol for Kai. And what's going to be interesting about this is that there are many other meditation arts that use these hand symbols that are kind of different clans, not called Kuja Curry. But you'll find that they are actually practical textbook ways of holding your hands that have an alchemy in the spiritual and the physical and you know, have something to do with the, the energy flowing through your body. So therefore, in other arts, they're going to be used in a very similar way. Now, in this particular art, Kuja Curry, I can break down for you why, what this particular symbol is used for, and that will help us kind of understand why it was used for Christianity. And beings that Ancient Christianity, like the meditations of Abraham during this blood ritual sacrifices, is going to be much more close to what's taking place in the Kujikuri than your modern Christians who are doing the praying hands at dinner time over dinner. Because modern Christians aren't getting visions and meditating, it's just uh, talking to themselves or God in prayer. 
So it's definitely a different kind of prayer. We're talking what original prayer was, was meditation. And while there may be no mention of these hand gestures in the Christian scripture, there are absolutely using these hand gestures in almost every religious practice in the world, and some of them explain to you why and how they were adopted by other religions. And it would be very obvious that Abraham used at least some of these symbols given the studies of this from a broad spectrum. So when we're looking at Kai, Kai is the Kujikuri symbol for awareness and control. It is used with neutral breathing and phase one and two of negative breathing. The physical effect of Kai is complete control over the function of the body. The mental effect is the sharpening of psychic awareness. Kai is used, first of all, to control the body. Ninja can use Kai to resist moving, sneezing, coughing, itching, and even the effects of the elements. Extreme heat or cold, other discomforts. At advanced levels of mastery, a ninja can enter into a state of controlled hibernation that can even resemble death. At the physical level, Kai gives a ninja ESP powers to sense the presence of danger and even to see the near future in advance. The dangers of Kai, especially when combined with negative breathing, are a dangerous psychic trance, respiratory and heart failure, and death. So I hope you people realize if you want to research this, it's not something you should play around with. You could experiment with some meditations as long as they're neutral breathing. You should not be practicing positive or negative breathing. If you got heavy into this, you'd realize that it should always be done with a partner. That being said, why would Kai be used with neutral breathing in Christian prayer or while Abraham meditates as he sacrifices and burns his sheep. Well, it says it right here, and it would be a good one to use if you wanted to have uh, mental awareness, uh, sharpening of psychic awareness, and good mental effects. And the interesting thing is while Abraham is taking part in his blood ritual sacrifice of the sheep, and he is burning the vapors of the sheep's body, the flesh. He is kneeling in prayer, and of course, most likely with his hands in a position of Kai, or the Buddhist lotus position, palms together over your heart. And these, both of these seem to increase awareness, and a psychic awareness, which is interesting because of the stories told by Abraham. During these sacrificial ceremonies, he would meditate and have visions from God and get messages from God and consultations with entities known as angels. This sounds familiar if you're studying many different cultural practices of this kind of ritual sacrifice. Many cultures use it for forgiveness of sin. Many cultures use it to have a consultation with entities, angels, exactly what Abraham was doing. And so the interesting thing is Abraham was likely using a hand symbol like this, and it's practical. It's physically practical in what you might call Eastern medicine. Energy flows that do happen in your body, not necessarily on the spiritual level, but on the physical level. Blood moving, heart beating, rhythm. Holding, when you have pulse in certain fingers and not other ones and directing them, you can direct energies that are internal. But first, with Kujikuri, you learn how to become aware of them long before you'll be directing them anywhere. And that being said, if you were trying to meditate to conjure up a council with a deity or an entity or an angel, it makes perfect sense why it would look identical to the Kujikuri as the Kujikuri uses similar hand symbols to go into the void and have consultations with past lives or uh, loved ones who have passed on to the void. This book is a very interesting read and you'll read a lot about how the Habd symbol of the Koga Ninja was very practically used in battle. 
They tend to have used this prayer art more for battle, and you'll see in Mongolia and those uh, cultures, they tend to have used these kinds of prayer rituals more for discipline and battle. But uh, it's definitely part of the intact magic system that came from Eden. And uh, it's just one of the most interesting subjects in the world. So if you guys like the series on blood magic, it's going to get vast. I'm going to touch on many different areas. And I'm sure it probably surprises many people that I touched on the praying hands, both Christians and esoteric uh, students alike, because even myself trying to search for images to assist my discussion, it was hard to find any information on the praying hands. Mostly the vast answer is, it's a mystery. But it's not a mystery. I started practicing the Kuji Curry when I was about 14 years old. And I practiced it probably till I was about 30. So, I always knew there was some connection to the praying hands, but I suppose it would take a lot of years of researching ancient cultures and linguistic systems, and following this blood magic has made me realize the connection. So ultimately, uh, those practitioners of blood magic that do not appear to be using symbols, like the Buddhists, they use sound, well they actually have a symbol around them that you can't see with your eyes, but it has a reality just like the one in chalk. Um, the other ones, they maybe they don't have a sound, but they're doing something with their hands, like Abraham and the Habd or the Koga Ninja. Uh, 